So hello, guys. Um, welcome to this Lily Theater Company artist interview. We have a very special guest and very honored to have. Um, he is a professor at Berkeley College of Music. He is a violinist, a bassist, and also a recording artist. Um, please give a warm welcome to Joseph Naj. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. <laughs> so um, this month is April, and the, it's considered the Jazz History Month. Um, so what do you think about um, like jazz overall, how this is um, Jazz History Month and everything? It's great. great. It's great to have another month that is dedicated to music. And, um, you know, jazz is uh, something that um, I like. Um, I would like to, you know, have it with me all the time. And it's part of um, a certain language that that we all kind of you know musicians um use and i like the freedom that's involved with jazz so and obviously it, it's a big part of my career so yeah it's great that's great yeah I do do appreciate jazz stuff kind of the start of the um start of the music in the early 1900s and everything just yeah definitely studied a lot about jazz and it's it's, it's who can not like like as the um, the B from the B movie, you like jazz. <laughs> it's a <laughs> little joke there. Anyways, um, yeah, we would like to do. Um, we usually interview a lot of these great artists like you because we just like to get the inspiring um, music and your impact in your music career and everything. How people are inspired by your musicianship and everything. So, um, where did you? Um, are you from the Boston area or where did you grow up at? Well, I've been to Boston area since 2000, uh, but I, I was born and I grew up in Yugoslavia. Now, that used to be a country that uh, doesn't exist anymore. Um, it used to have six republics and all of those republics are now countries. So I'm uh, from the part that is now Serbia. Uh, if you know the tennis player, Novak Djokovic, he's from Serbia, is probably the most popular um serbian guy so um yeah that's where i was born and that's where i grew up and that's where i went to school i lived all the way until the end of my high school and um and then i moved to budapest uh hungary i was there for two years and then i kind of moved back and forth between um uh, serbia and hungary and uh a different town in serbia also and then in 2000 um, I came to Boston to study at Berkeley. <laughs> yeah, so um, actually, I know, uh, um, actually, he's my current um, drum teacher, Marko Djordjevic. Oh, yeah. You know him. Yeah, he's he's from Serbia yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and he's, he's a good Great friend drummer and everything. He's he's awesome. So, um, yeah, speaking of Berkeley, so what were you like as a student in Berkeley? How, was, um, how did Berkeley treat you? <laughs> Berkeley was great. It was a great experience, obviously, you know, um, a great school, get, great place to, you know, get your education. And, uh, you know, I was determined to get the most out of it. Um, and, um, you know, I had some uh, difficulties, you know, adjusting to, you know, United States and, and, and all the different um, system, you know, that the school system and obviously college and and uh you know some language you know stuff and and all of that but um i was kind of like i said determined and and had a vision that this is something that i will pursue with uh you know 150 percent of myself and um you know now looking um at those back at those years um i'm actually proud of myself that that i was able to accomplish um you know that and 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 move on and and move on through those you know times where where you have you know your ups and downs and things happen in in life and and you're still young and inexperienced you know um but you know here I am so um like I said I'm 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 proud of um the, the the times that um i was at berkeley and now you know coming back years after and you know doing the teaching there 
is um it's just another thing you know that that makes me uh you know feel even better yeah um berkeley is definitely a great music college like like i chose all the all all the colleges to go here and stuff i'm also <laughs> berkeley student too um for yeah. the viewers out there so yeah it's a great college and everything starting with music and everything so what was your, uh, what's your history about i know you're multi-instrumentalist your bassist violinist what was your history about coming to those instruments and stuff well i grew up in a, a musician's family um my dad was uh or still is but he's retired now he's a professional musician um played clarinet and um tenor and alto sax um my mom was a music teacher um not a music teacher but um she was a, a teacher in the school war you know a grade uh one to four so she was also teaching one of the classes she was teaching was music that's what i meant when i said uh music teacher so she played a little piano and accordion um so you know i grew up in in the house listening to music all the time so i don't even remember if if, if you know people ask me like oh how did you start playing music i don't even remember how did i start playing music because you know so young and um i do remember uh some of the uh, things just by looking at photos um you know that, that they have and then um I remember going to private lessons and um, taking private lessons and then going to school. So I was I was going to my elementary school, uh, let's say, you know, in the morning, but then in the afternoon hours, I was going to the music school. And, and you know, we had instrument uh, lessons, you know, private lessons. And then later on, we had ear training and, and theory and, 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 you know, all the good stuff. And then my high school years, um, I went to what they call a musical high school, like gymnasium, which um, all we had, for most of the classes we had was music related. Um, so, you know, all I did in my life was music and, um, you know, playing, you know, violin was a great start for me. And obviously that's my primary instrument. I'm you know, I don't advertise myself as a guitar player or, or a bass player, but um, doing it, you know, in the time where other genres were also popular, not just classical, you know, um, brought me to uh, guitar and um, and later on bass and, you know, like composing and, 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 you know, all the good stuff that music has, harmony, counterpoint and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, I picked up the guitar. I think I was like, I don't know, maybe 13, 14 years old. And um, and I, I'm self-taught on guitar, you know, pretty much. But, you know, the left hand was kind of easy because I already had my left hand from my violin. So I just kind of, you know, figured out where the, the notes would go and... Um, um, you know, figuring out the different like six string versus four, you know, the chords were kind of a little bit um, difficult for me because normally we don't play a lot of chords on the violin. So this was something that, you know, I had to figure it out. Um, and then the bass is is a completely different story because, um, it you know, it's bass. So I like to call, you know, or do you play bass or you play bass? as a guitarist you know that's that's like kind of a two different thing things um you know or or people playing bass thinking as as a guitar player you know i like to think as bass as as bass you know if if you think uh even in classical music you know big you know philharmonic orchestras you know you're talking double bass sections that's what i'm thinking bass you know um so anyways um to cut the long story short yeah i play guitar and bass and that i've been you know gigging and and you know playing uh in bands and stuff so <clears throat> it's good <laughs> i like both i like both well that's great that i like um you're very talented because you're a multi-instrumentalist or you even 
everybody's talented in their own way and stuff. So I'm a multi-instrumentalist too. My primary instrument is drum set. So that's my <laughs> primary instrument. So I know you've been, um, you've been looking at the, you were looking at the LTC Blue Theater Company website and um, we're striving to um, teach people that like, don't have access to um, teaching or anything like that. We try to reach out to the world and everything. So um, like with me, most of my life, I was self-taught too. I self-taught at drums, um, at, I did a little bit of guitar. I, I still, I'm still self-taught with all my other instruments, but like with drums, I think it was like during COVID that I finally had a private instructor to teach me about drums so um do you have any like um like um positive things about having a prime instructor instead of being self-taught and everything like is there oh, a difference absolutely because you need a structure you know having a structure and and having someone looking over your shoulder saying hey you know try this this way and just the experience that you know, instructors have in, in, in general is, is huge, you know, cause you, 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 you could be fishing online or you could be, you know, in my day, there was no internet. So, you know, we, I just, you know, uh, listened to the music and, and I, I was trying to figure it out the chords, you know, I remember one of the interesting things is that, um, some of the bands that I listened to were playing in uh, the guitar was or the, all, all the, the band was tuned to down to E flat, but I didn't know that. So I played all the songs in E flat and G flat and A flat and, and you know what I mean? In, in, instead of E, A, E, G, A, D, what they did on a guitar, I played the hard way because I didn't know. There was no one to tell me like, hey, you know, these guys are half half step uh, tuned down, you know, so. You know, just one of the examples, you know, how uh, things could be easier. And then there's like, you know, millions of other, other, um, you know, things that you can learn. Although it yeah. is easier nowadays, as I mentioned, you know, you can go online and find things. Now, starting with an instrument and learning something on your own nowadays with internet, I think it's still kind of questionable. You know, but for example, from my perspective, you know, I go online and I, I search, for, you know, for something. I can say within 10 seconds, if that's something that I want to pursue to the end of the you know video, or is it something that it's not what I'm looking for? You know, but I've been doing this for so many years now, so I can tell if this is, you know, legit or not. Um, or, you know, something that has my interest. Um, but as a beginner, I'm not sure how that, you know, um, works. Yeah, I can say um, a lot of great things about it. I can say, like, positive and negative things about just Internet by itself. Like, um, when I first um, had a private instructor, he was from, like, I'm from... Louisiana when I was when I was in Louisiana I had a private instructor that lived in Philadelphia mm -hmm. I can't I can't go all the way up there every day of the week so we decided to do online which is back then that won't even happen or anything like that like we didn't um probably COVID really helped us in a way to have like online lessons and stuff especially with um Berkeley like when I tried out for Berkeley I tried out online and stuff instead of going all the way to Boston to yeah. try out in Berkeley. So it was a lot easier. Oh, and yeah. I probably say the negative part is that like y'all are long distance away. And if you're just so confused, um, it's kind of hard to like um, email them and all that stuff. So you got to like, I can say, I, I, I can say good and bad stuff about, um, internet and stuff but internet really helps you out with um like just the locations and stuff if someone's in seattle and you're in like um asia you can still take lessons through online It'll oh be, yeah no absolutely it's the way more problem, way more access and stuff yeah the only problem is you know like i said if you're a beginner with the instrument so if someone has to tell you how to sit by that drum set you know 
or how to uh, uh, properly place your drums. You know what I mean? It's it's harder to do it online than than if you would be right next to me and I say, "Oh, this is what you do." You know, you know that's that's the exactly. thing. Right? But 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 if you already have experience with that, you already have your posture for violin or guitar. You know, so you know what you're doing. You can play three octave scales. Then we can talk about you know other things and move forward with you know, more, more delicate, you know, things, but it's really hard for me to, uh, how can I explain to a six year old, you know what I mean? How to hold a violin online, you know, I was, you know, that's, that's what I'm referring to, you know? Yeah, that definitely helps. Cause I'm, I'm teaching live and, um, online. I'm, I started out as a drum teacher. Um, I still am for LTC and, and um, yeah, it definitely helps out with, um, um, cause I teach most of beginners and stuff. So it might be a little bit hard <laughs> to teach and yeah. stuff, but yeah, we'll figure it out and stuff. So yeah. Um, great talking about that. Um, so who influenced you to play music or play your instruments become hmm. who you are? <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. I don't remember. Um, when when i started playing music i just remember as i was growing up i was already playing so it, it was part of my my life and um you know i mean i have obviously um was exposed to different i, I listened to a, a lot of stuff when i was a kid to uh especially jazz because my dad was um you know listening and playing that music in the house most of the time uh, but I remember, you know, even classical music was involved. We had a, a great thing on, like, um, during Sunday, you know, we would, because, you know, weekdays, everyone's busy, right? So Sunday, Saturday, Sundays were the days where we kind of get together and have a nice lunch as a family. You know, I have yeah. a younger younger brother and obviously my mom and dad. So, you know, Saturdays were sometimes busy, you know, uh, even with uh, work or, you know, maybe we had some, um, you know, performances and, you know, as kids and, you know, sports, things like that. But then Sunday was the day really to kind of get together and relax. And one of the things uh, we did uh, was we were listening to music uh, and and the lunch was wasn't for 15 minutes or a half hour. We, you know, we took our time. So we did that, you know, probably I don't know hour and a half maybe two hours you know and my dad would play vinyl records you know um because you know that was the thing then you know and luckily uh he had and still has you know a, a good good amount of him so you know he was just kind of moving the music around and you know one week it would be charlie parker next week would be i don't know don't buy us the third week could be you know mozart um fourth week whatever you know um so that was something that i do remember and i have very fond memories of um and i think that was that was important um but then later you know you i discovered pop and rock because you know that's something that you um you get when when you go to schools you know when you start you know um, talking about music with friends and, and later on you know I started playing in bands and you know all of that so Mozart wasn't too cool at the time you know uh, and, and and this is where what and and how you know I started thinking about doing something else you know I, I started improvising I didn't even know what, what kind of what I was doing but um, you know playing classical pieces and playing the music that you know like 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 this you know so it's like oh this is this is how you're going to be playing it and and you can do it exactly as it is or it's wrong and mm. that was the thing that I was like okay so what if I add this or delete that you know or <clears throat> and then um then I you know got deeply or deeper into uh, blues and, and and jazz and rock you know uh, my high school days I was heavily into rock and then um, later you know I, I went back to or got deeper into jazz because I just I wasn't just listening I started 
you know, playing it more and kind of um, getting deeper into just the understanding of, of jazz as an art form, you know. Like I said, it's a little bit different than than other, you know, uh, other stuff. So, yeah. And, um, and then I applied for Berkeley. And, uh, and I wanted to, to come to Boston and, and learn jazz. You know, that was, that was the thing. And, and all my, so I, my degree is, um, at Berkeley was professional music, but, um, structured like, uh, performance, uh, in, in performance way of, uh, towards jazz. So all my, my classes were, you know, 80% of the classes that I took were like improv related and jazz related and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's um, actually cool because I'm majoring in pro music and um, oh, great. Yeah. my concentration is performance. So there you uh, go. yeah, when I was younger, I was actually, I, I was heavily in a rock and like metal. My My dad <laughs> kept on playing it when I was a little kid and stuff. And then I discovered jazz like seventh grade something like that and um there was there was a place called tibetina's in new orleans very popular place and um i had the youth workshop over there and they teaching us just how what a swing was and the stuff so i was like yeah, oh, yeah. oh cool then i went to high school and did the jazz band for four years and never listened to jazz never liked jazz just wanted to play it but i didn't i didn't really like like it and stuff and then when covid hit um, my band director wanted, I was like part of our assignment was to listen to a jazz song and like write down like how it was and everything. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Cause my, um, I don't know if you know, Donald Harrison Jr. Great saxophone player. Mm -hmm. he, went, he went to Berkeley, but like in sophomore year, I did the Tibetina's internship program and it was a lot of jazz and he was saying, kept on talking about miles davis miles davis miles davis i'm like who is that guy so later on i got to listen to miles davis music i was like oh okay he's like the biggest jazz trumpet player ever <laughs> so <laughs> and um yeah and ever, ever since i got to berkeley like i think berkeley is just that college where like there's so many different people and different cultures around that they get you to listen to all types of music and like all my classes are different music like um i think um i'm taking rock development taking world percussion which is we started like indian and african rhythms and um i've taken fusion next semester so i'm like i'm getting into like all kinds of music and stuff so it's yeah. it's great to be more um aware with the with different music and everything and definitely appreciate it. By the end it. of your studies you you'll probably figure out that it's all very related, you know. Well yeah, it helps you out with um what you do and everything. How how to become you as a musician and everything. Yeah, I think the first jazz musician that ever lived was Bach. You know, he just didn't know or we didn't know or you know they didn't know that that was jazz but that's you know i'm i'm 100 positive that that's um the first written music that was put in the way that he did that was jazz music that's that's bach yeah i didn't really know i didn't really notice that because like yeah like back then everybody's saying it's classical it's classical it's gotta be classical they didn't know about jazz or blues until like later on and stuff so well i yeah. mean classical obviously has a big part of it for everything because that's the foundation and i'm very grateful that i had the classical background you know for all those years that that i played classical you know because he really helped me when uh, when i left you know that world um he really helped me to not just for like performance wise but understanding of music and harmony and how how music developed from 
from Bach to Miles Davis, as you mentioned, or, you know, Charlie Parker. Um, and then even later on, you know, uh, different, all the different genres that we have in the 20th century, you know. Um, but, you know, classical would be the foundation for all of that. And as I mentioned, once you get, you know, you, you have to start the cycle, right? You know, like the circle of fifths, you know, you, you start it and, and, and as you go away and it kind of, you know, gets into the gray area, as I call it, you know, A flat, D flat, G flat, right? But then slowly it goes back to like A, A, D and G, and then, and then you're back where you were, you know? <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's a nice cycle, you know, exploring never ends. As as long as you are interested in exploring, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but as you're g g digging deeper into different styles and different type of music and different genres and and all that, um, the more you figure it out, it's like, oh yeah, this is this, and you know, this is similar to that, and and this might be, you know, coming from this type of music and you know it's like playing in a band you know let's a cover band the more songs you know the the, the, the more they sound alike you know eventually you start you stop even practicing all those songs because they they end up having the same progression you know you know one six four five or you know one four five or one four you know five six or whatever whatever it is it the progression is the same it's just the melody is is could be different or you know should be different let's say that <laughs> you know no copyrights or anything like that but yeah i i it gets um yeah it has it has its different patterns and stuff and yeah that's just a lot of um music they can they can all be alike and everything because they have their everybody has their own influence by someone and stuff so it's, yes absolutely yes that's yeah. music right there all right so um before you went to berkeley is there like any so junior high and high school when you were there was there any did they focus on music or anything like that Were they like um did you have any music access to when you were in junior high and high school Yes, yeah, like I said, I was uh, going to uh, a musical, you know, kind of high schools specified specifically for, um, you know, people who are interested in pursuing music as a career. Um, and uh, they had two different uh, categories. One of the categories was instrumentalist, so you could play an instrument, and the other category was um, theoretical, so you could be, you know, doing more... Um, you know, um, like harmony and counterpoint and music theory, um, you know, theory related, um, you know, classes. And obviously that was for four years. So right after um, elementary school. So nine to what grades? Nine to 12, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but this is the time where uh, I, I, I played classical heavily. And pro this is probably the time where I practiced the most. And I always tell my, my students that between age of 13, 14, and 20 is probably your, your best time to practice because you don't have to worry about anything else. Everything else is provided. You know, housing, food, all that stuff is there. You don't have to worry about that. So, you know, and, um, and, uh, yeah, so I was playing in orchestras. Um, I was part of like a youth philharmonic orchestra. Um, we even traveled, we had some tours in Europe, traveled to Romania, um, different parts of, um, uh, of Yugoslavia at the time, uh, went to Hungary. Um, so, you know, it was fun. But at the time, I was, as I mentioned, I was starting exploring uh, different types of, you know, music. And rock was really popular at the time. So that caught my attention. And this is where I started playing guitar also. So I started, you know, playing in bands at just about the same time when I was like 15, 16 years old. 
um, you know, with my high school friends and, um, and I lived in a, you know, a town with 150,000 people. So it wasn't small, but it wasn't, you know, as big. So we kind of knew our ways and, and, um, luckily we had even venues, you know, several venues, venues to uh, play at. So, and that was cool. You know, that was, uh, that was a time when, when, when I really, um, thought that that this could be something i want to do you know and i i still i you know after all these years and, and thousands of of shows uh, that i did in my life i really enjoy playing i i have this urge to think about performing all the time you know and creating different you know, ideas for every performance, like, you know, from set list to even dress codes, you know, it's, it's kind of a, I don't know, um, a, a, a something that really con I connect with, you know. Yeah, I definitely um, agree with you on that with, um, yeah, connecting and um, probably say like you music uh, music is therapy <laughs> that's why they have music therapy and all that stuff and it's just um music's great in my opinion <laughs> yeah no i'm uh, very fortunate i i consider myself very fortunate to be doing what i do you know i i know and i'm aware that i really worked hard to be where i'm at now uh not that i'm the greatest musician of all times i don't that that doesn't exist you know um but to make you know music for living is is a great feeling you know and then it's another great feeling to pass on the information to other musicians who want to learn you know yeah so that's such a great I don't, thing I don't, I don't have a feeling of of how can I say this so it doesn't sound, you know, too aggressive? Uh, I don't have a feeling of going to work. You know what I mean? I, I have a, I, I, every time I, I go to work, I go to have fun, you know, and, and, and even learn more because, you know, music is a never ending um, thing, at, at least when it comes to learning. There's always something that you can learn you know whether it's new or or you know relatively new or different you know so sometimes i i, I go into the class and and kids are playing and i was like wow what was that play it again you know so i mean how beautiful is that right yeah, that's that's really great words just um you don't have to work it's um no i i you just I enjoy you, my you have yeah. you have fun as a you have fun as a living that's what i was that's what i'm trying to do like i that my main thing to do is music and everything and play my instrument and want to go tour and everything and if i if you i'll probably say like work is you do something that you don't want to do but it can also, it, it's um. I I did that too, unfortunately. It's considered you know? it's considered work, but it's fun and stuff. It, it's um. Yeah, once I don't you, know. Once you, you have you fun for money. That's it. <laughs> yeah, once you do stuff that you don't like, you start appreciating this even more. You know what I mean? That's that's great. So um, yeah. Um, let's see. So you did a master class. Um, Lily was telling me um about electrifying. Like it sounded like you were electrifying instruments, like maybe put like a clarinet and distortion and stuff like that. Um, so Lily was interested in like she's a clarinet player and she's trying to change her sound to her instrument. So you want to talk a little bit about um your master class and stuff what you did well my master class was 
um, primarily towards string instruments. Yeah. But obviously in 2023, we can do a lot of different stuff with technology. So, you know, as we already mentioned, um, internet. Um, in, in the other hand, we have all this devices and, and, and pedals and, and all the computers, right? That they can help nurture our ideas is how I like to think about it. Um, because I play differently when I use um, different equipment, you know? So if I use a delay, I, I play a little bit different. If I use a distortion, I'm, I'm gonna play a little bit differently. If I use, you know, wah-wah pedal, then I, I play differently. So it's still my playing, but it opens up different and, not, and, and more doors in my playing, you know? So that's why I'm saying it, it's kind of, um, it opens up my create, creative side even more. And um, so my masterclass is um, about how to uh, amplify those instruments, you know, how to, how to put th those instruments um, in order to, to be working with like an amplifier or, you know, because I mean, the easiest part, well, I should say not the easiest, but the most uh, popular way of, of doing things would be, you, you know, you mic something, you put a mic on, on clarinet, you, you put a mic on whatever, saxophone, you put a mic on, on violin, and then you're all set. Um, but that's not what we do at smaller gigs or venues and you know that's more like studio work where where you have you know the microphones available that are very expensive you know all all those things so um that's what we talk about you know what pickups to use and and how to amplify that and then what pedals to to use for certain instruments and how they work with it with an instruments you know and um and it just creates this uh, completely different sound, you know. You you would think it's a guitar, but it's actually not, <laughs> you know. So that's that's um, part of of um, what we do, or what I kind of um, you know created to present to students because there's always questions, you know. And my job is to answer questions to the best of my knowledge. At a given moment, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to be on top of the game and say, oh, you know, boss just came out with this new overdrive pedal or whatever, you know, give it a shot. It might work for what you need, you know, or or I can say, hey, that pedal is maybe not good for that. Try, you know, different one. But I'm always trying to have some sort of knowledge and, and keep my knowledge on top of the game so I can have suggestions when the time comes you know when the when the when students are asking questions you know yeah definitely um appreciate um the master class maybe if you um if you have one i can attend to it and stuff i definitely very interested in um just yeah just electronics and everything that's that just comes with music production and everything so if it's yeah of course yeah that's great um so what was it, what's it like with your music industry like um uh, well what can i tell you i don't uh, uh, the music industry is changing i i think from day to day even if not you know hour by the hour or minute by minute um so you know i have learned and uh gained experience doing things one way and then you wake up the next morning and then and everything is kind of the other way, you know. Um, and I have mixed emotions, again, with the technology. So, uh, you know, things as, as good as they are, sometimes they work in, 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 um, in a way that it could be a disadvantage. You know, using computer and and uh, like a DAW, right? Like a digital audio workstation, um, could be a great skill, and to you know produce a record, for example. You know, back in the day, 
you know, we didn't have that. You had to go to a studio, right? And then do that in the studio and you would have to have a producer and, and an engineer to help you with all that. Now you kind of, you can kind of do that all on your own, um, which is great. What I'm trying to say is the quality of the music that you're going to do the same as as you if you would be hiring someone who's a professional in that field you know and there's so many different examples of um the contemporary music where it's kind of turning to and in what's the you know from um you know just these streaming platforms you know is that good or bad for us is it good or bad for the listeners? You know, who benefits the most out of these things? You know, there's so many different questions that I don't even have answers to, to that. You know, I think time will tell if this is a good time or a bad time or if, if we did something that we we're not supposed to be doing or, or, or if something was just great, you know. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not too deeply into um i'm not following you know the industry day by day how things develop i'm just kind of um you know holding back and in, in trying to think about things that um make my life happy you know and 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 if i'm happy then i can i can be friendly and i can you know transcend that happiness to to someone else you know um but um, music is something that is around us all the time, right? So we're kind of um, digesting music second by second. Now, we have an option to, to pick and choose what do we digest, right? I mean, we have restaurants and foods all over the country and all over the world. But we pick what we eat, you know. So, but then there's another thing, you know, if you have several of the same restaurants um, that are offering the same thing, then it's kind of hard to pick. So, you know, I'm not trying to be too smart here or whatever, but we'll see. Time will tell. You know, if this is uh, it, it, the time that we'll live in now, is this is good time? Or it could be um, challenging times. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I'll probably, yeah, when you were saying about um, music's very, very just, you, can, you hear music everywhere. Like if you drive your car, you put music on. If you go to the store and shop, you hear music. If you go to a restaurant, you hear yep. music. If you go to... If you go on the city, you hear music. If, like pretty much everywhere you go, correct. Yeah, most of the time you hear music and stuff. So it's 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 a very um, that's what I pick up on and everything. Just um, music's music's huge. <laughs> yeah, but when you go to a shopping mall, right, and and you're listening to the music that's on on the speaker, you have no control of that music, right? Yeah. So. So that's what I'm saying by the restaurants, you know, you, you don't, you don't have, you don't control um, the menu, you know? Mm. So that's why I said there's a different way, different things for musicians and, and consumers, you know, I don't listen. When I listen to music, I listen to music very different way than, than my neighbor's listening, who is a painter, you know mm. what I mean? And I'm not saying that my way is, is good or bad or his, you know, I'm just saying we listen to the same piece of music different way, you know? Yeah, that was um, great stuff. Um, so with, what was it like um, playing clubs in Boston? Boston is a great city. It really is. Because I've played most of the clubs um, 
throughout the years. Obviously not all because, you know, you have new venues and you have some venues closing down and, and whatnot. But um, what I like about Boston is that you have an option to go and listen to music almost every night of the week and different types of music. You know what I mean? So you and I can go and see uh, a, a classical piece, right? A famous violinist could be playing in the symphony hall. The same night, you probably have 50 other bands playing somewhere else. From jazz to funk to rock to reggae to you name it. You know? And it's quality music. So very rarely happened for all these years that I'm living here that I walk into a, you know, could be even like a dive bar, right? And I walk in and I'm saying to myself, well, yeah, I mean, these guys are really not doing a great job. You know, that rarely, rarely happens. You know, to the, to the point where I can't even remember a situation on top of my head right now you know so that's what i like about it you know and i think the scene has changed obviously as we mentioned the music industry changed so you know you know back in the 50s and 60s you had way more jazz clubs than you have now but we still have some places where you can play jazz you know and unfortunately i think jazz is kind of in decline as far as popularity but it wasn't, it, it, um, jazz never was the most popular music. I think the heyday was maybe in the 20s and 30s, you know, swing time. Um, so, you know, considering that, it's, it's fine. We don't need 50 jazz clubs in Boston. But we need few to keep the scene alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, when I got to, actually, when I got to Boston, it was 2021. It was just, it was right after everybody was, at, it was right after everybody was in lockdown, everything was closed, and it was just like nothing was open and stuff. And it, I was like, okay. So I just went to Berkeley and stuff and just slowly, slowly, slowly got back to normal until. Like I probably say, like this past year, that was like the most normal I've ever seen in Boston. Like I go to Cambridge all the time, and like every club packed with bands, packed with people, and everything. I never, I didn't see that when I got here two years ago and stuff. So it definitely, um, Boston's getting back to its normal spot. Um, I know all the other years, but yeah, COVID shut everything down and i got here at the worst time but it got back to where it's it should slowly be. it's slowly getting back yeah slowly getting back and uh you know the covid times were covid times we all know how that uh went but fortunately it's in the past yeah you know so let's just look forward and hopefully yeah, and things are moving in a good direction. MGM Music Hall just opened up down on um, Lansdowne Street. Yeah, so, I went there. So that, so that's, so that's a new spot, you know. Yeah, was, um, yeah, I agree. Boston's a fantastic city, and I came from New Orleans, which is another huge music city and stuff. And yeah, both great cities and stuff. So, um. Yeah, you recorded um a few you record a few albums and um do you want to talk a little bit about about your um albums and your own music and stuff? Sure, yes, yeah, so I have three records. Um I've played on on several others um just as a sideman and as a as a uh guest artist. But my three records would be uh Digital World, I released that in 2009. Um, which is a um, combination of a little bit of everything uh, from pop rock to even some jazz. Um, at the time, I was kind of heavily influenced with, um, um, you know, 
people like Jean-Luc Ponty. Um, and then in 2016, I released a straightforward jazz record called Dark Green Yet Blue. Um, and that's uh, under um, Arabesque Records. Uh, the first one was uh, released under um, Canadian label MD Scoring. So, and then the second one is Arabesque Records. And the third one uh, is a COVID record. So uh, I did everything online for that record. Mm. Yeah, when I realized that COVID is not going to go away within, you know, a day or two or weeks or months or whatever, then I um, said to myself, okay, you know, this is a good time for me to start working on a new record. And, and I did. So I contacted the musicians that I thought would be a good fit for what I had in mind. And, um, and I started working on that just about in like April, I'm going to say April of 2020. And it was done by the end of 2020. And the record is just called 2021. Um, and, um, you know, uh, I just kind of wanted to give that name because I was hoping that 2021 will a little be a little bit be better than than 2020, you know, in hope that this this coming year will bring us more happiness rather than more whatever we had in 2020. Um, because everybody had different emotions, you know, during COVID time. Uh, and then, actually, I have the record right here. So that's the that's the cover for it. Um, and um, the song names are also interesting. Uh, COVID related um, starts with fantastic plastic, meaning you know plastic as a form of something that we consume all all day every day um that it's you know presented to us in different ways uh we have clown parade um cabin fever right so the lockdown um lol but it's it's actually not just lol but it's called labor of love you know, going back to let me do what I love to do, you know. Optimistic is another song, obviously, just optimistic being, you know, going back to happiness. Uh, next song is Light That Shines. You know, when you sit, sit in a room and there's like a little window window right there and then, and then you like, oh, okay, you know, I'd like to see that light, you know, from a different angle, you know. And then number seven is called Ludilo. That's craziness in Serbian. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, um, something that happened to to us uh, with COVID. And then and then I put the um, back in 2018. Uh, I played a show in Portland, Maine, and uh, we played the uh, Jimi Hendrix tune "Little Wing." So I recorded Love that. Song. Yeah, I recorded that live and I put it on the record as a as a, you know, closing song. Um so, you know, I don't know the exact amount of uh, musicians, number of musicians that played on this record, but it's it's really a good good amount of number. Um over 10 easy. Um and then the other thing is I once I put everything together, so I would have ideas and I would send those ideas to the people that, you know, um, that I had in mind. And they recorded their parts in their home or studio, right? Because they didn't have anywhere else to go, just like me, right? And uh, so they would send those ideas back and then I would put the, the, the picture together. Um, so it was a learning curve for me to to use a computer in a different way. I um, have gained more experience and more knowledge using uh, the you know DAW digital audio workstations, and um, and another thing that I never did before was mixing. 
so I learned how to mix, you know, how to put things together and how to use EQs. And, and, um, so that was really, really, um, an interesting, you know, thing. And, and, um, again, I'm, I'm almost kind of thankful that, that COVID allowed me to do that. I know that, I know that this sounds crazy, right? But if COVID didn't happen, I'm not sure if this if if this would be in my hands today, you know. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just crazy, or maybe I'm just too deeply into what I do. But um, I'm again, I'm I'm grateful that this had, I had an opportunity to work on this during those times, you know. Yeah, it's um, on this. I'm, I might be crazy too, but um. There's some positive and negative things about COVID and stuff. Yeah, of course, we we all know about the negative things, but like, yeah, positive. Like, I've heard so many records that came out during COVID and stuff. Yeah. A lot yeah. of musicians, yeah. they couldn't tour. They couldn't. They were so, everybody was all busy. Like, the whole well, world. Well, everyone was locked in. The whole world was busy before COVID and stuff. And COVID just took it all away nobody's busy there's no like it was like an actual like nobody was busy everybody was home doing nothing and you can't get out or anything like that so everybody had that mindset of trying to keep themselves busy and stuff at least i have that is that they they're like all right what am i going to do um <laughs> yeah and people start being productive and stuff and everything instead of um yeah like, i just trying spend... to find something to do while COVID's hours happening, while hours. not doing anything, <laughs> I spent hours and hours in that in in the room right next to me. You know, I I made that room as a studio, and uh, I would get here at sometimes at eleven o'clock in the morning, and I would go home at like three a.m. Mm. So, but uh, in the other hand, I'm 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 glad those things are those days are over. So we, you know, went back to normal, being human beings, shaking hands, you know, talking to each other with no masks and, and all of that, you know, because that's that's what that's who we are. We're human beings. We need social life. We need interactions. We yep. need, you know, what I mean, um, but like I said, I, I just uh, kind of appreciate the time that I had to do this. And and this is, you know. Um, my pandemic you know, baby, as they call it, or whatever, you know, pandemic dog, right? That 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 was a awesome. thing at some point. Oh, he's a pandemic dog, you know, like you're walking uh, down the street and you see someone with a dog, like, hey, he's a pandemic dog, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> all right, that was all, all good stuff. So for your, um, your first song that we're going to use for the um, video, um, would you want to talk a little bit about it before we show it to the viewers? Sure. Yeah. So it's going to be the opener from the record, uh, Fantastic Plastic. Um, and uh, we shot the video. Uh, late 2020. Yeah. So before it was released, obviously. Um, and um, we shot a video throughout Boston and the area. So I wanted to, um, you know, pick up the city where, you know, I spent most of my life. Um, so you can see, you know, all different places. Revere Beach is in, in, the, in the video. Uh, downtown Boston is in the video. Uh, some of the scenes from North Shore, cities and towns also in there. Um, it's a good funky tune. Um, a friend, a good friend of mine who is also a Berkeley graduate. Um, he graduated even before me. His name is Vasil Hajimanov. He played keys on this record. So it's another thing that, you know, I kind of picked people um, where I thought they would be great. And uh, he's great with like funk and stuff. So um, it was a great collaboration with, with him. And, and it was a great thing to put, you know, um, him in the record and then, put Boston in the video because you know he also lived um certain 
certain time here. So, um, you know, it's um, it's all good stuff. I'm I'm really proud of this record, and I hope you're gonna like the video. Yeah, and the song too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to shift to the video and hope you all enjoy.
And we're back. Um, that was an awesome tune. Um, get to show around Boston and playing the fiddle, and you were playing the bass and the guitar in the record too. And um, just um, get to show what Boston is like and everything, and um, definitely showing the culture and everything. So great, great record, great song, and everything. Um, let's shift gears to your um, your teaching. So. You were a teacher at, um, well, you are teaching at um, Berkeley College of Music. So what's it like being a professor here? Oh, it's great. It's great from several standpoints. Um, I don't even know how to, uh, you know, describe the, um, the honor and responsibility at the same time. And I, I mentioned the responsibility because I feel responsible to educate these students and give my 120% so they can pursue their goals and careers, you know. Um, and obviously, it, it is an honor because, you know, let's just, you know, face it and say it, Berkeley is the best school in the world for music. You know, there are other great schools, but I think Berkeley is the greatest. So, you know, being on a faculty list um, is is uh, really, you know, special feeling. Um, especially because it's kind of, remember I talked about that circle, right? Yeah. So me coming, coming to Boston as an international student is, you know, um, coming from a smaller country, getting to the States, getting to a big city, getting to a different school system, and then going through all of that, right? And then graduating, and then I was teaching, you know, different places meanwhile, and, you know, doing the gigs and all that stuff. And then I started teaching at Berkeley. So that's that's the, the, the circle that I was talking about that kind of, you know, completes uh, with, you know, with that. So... It's great. I'm um, always looking forward to um, hear more talent. It happens from room to room. Even just walking down the hallway, you know, not even teaching, just listening to what's happening in those rooms is just magnificent. You know? Um, so, it's great. Yeah, it's also great being a student here, and I we kind of have the same experiences seeing all the the, the seeing all the um, like the faculty and the students just wailing in on their instruments and stuff, and just going to a school where everybody's great here and stuff. It's just everybody's kind of like um like great thing about um probably social wise, like I always want to be a musician, but I was always in public schools where I don't really have a lot of friends that were musicians, but now I'm like here and everybody wants to do what I want to do. So we exactly. have that more common thing and it's, it's great. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great place to be not only to study, but to hang. Right. Mm -hmm. With, as you said, with the people who are kind of similar minded and have the same interest or similar interest, um, you know, and this is um, this is just a great place, um, you know, to be for everyone. You know, like I said, even as a, you know, now I'm looking from the other side, right, as a faculty and when I'm working with students, sometimes I'm like, OK, can you play that again, please? You know what I mean? Because it was great. So it's you know it, it's an amazing um generally speaking learning experience for everyone mm -hmm. you know yeah so it's awesome to be here um so what some of your what are some of your classes you teach i teach in two different departments so i teach in the string department those are um labs and and private instruction and uh i teach in the ensemble department and uh, i teach several ensembles from mixed bop 
to jazz to uh, rock and roll hall of fame mm. um, to mix styles yeah so four different types of of ensembles yeah i'm taking mixed styles with um low john roberts you know him oh yeah 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 so all yeah, the viewers out drummer, there yeah Lil John, he played with um, Janet Jackson experience for like the past 25 years and played with Stevie Wonder. Um, he's actually going to New Orleans this Saturday. He's playing at a private event and stuff, but he's he just went to Nam like a few days ago and stuff. He's 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 up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know Lil John. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's a great drummer. Um yeah, well, um, what do you focus mainly with teaching your students? That's a great question. Um, well, musically speaking, it's one thing. But there's also this part where you have to be aware of that we are still human beings, right? Culture is another important um, part of that. History is also another part of that. You know? So I'm trying to combine all of these things into my teaching where I'm going to say, well, maybe you should go back to, you know, I don't know, Mendelssohn and listen to, you know, those concertos or symphonies, right? And then you should go back and listen to Miles Davis or you should listen to Charlie Parker and see how that relates to each other, you know? And then sometimes... We just talk about um, life, which I think is also important. I'm not going to, you know, spend an hour talking about, you know, how nice it is to be outside and riding your bike. Um, but if the topic gets to a certain off music, you know, topic, then then we try to talk about things, and and I'm always open to any questions or ideas um you know because like i said there's a lot of talent in the rooms you know so overall there's there's all kinds of things happening you know in in these classes you know um i i like to keep it to the music part you know because that's the reason the students are there but if it happens to go off topic to a certain um, way, you know, I'm I'm happy to, you know, kind of follow up and and uh, you know talk about talk about life experiences as well, because I think that's important. You know, being a great musician is one thing, but be, being a great person is another thing. You know, completely different thing. You know, being a healthy person is also another thing, also important you know have this awareness of what's out there and and we know that you know today's world is a little bit different uh more challenges more opportunities uh more disappointments um you know th th this is all when i say life you know so i have students coming in disappointed if they're you know it could be a ratings audition or or disappointed because they didn't get the job that they applied for you know, or disappointed because they couldn't play what they practiced last night. So it sounded great last night in their, you know, dorm room, but they're coming into ensemble and it just doesn't sound as, as they think they would. So, you know, these are all challenges. These are life challenges, life situations that, um, that happens to everyone. You, me, people outside, everyone, you know. Um, so yeah, that and that's you know music specifically. I I like to talk about everything. You know, I my uh, one of the um, eras that I or or one of the topics that I really like to cover would be obviously jazz and improv, right? So you know, I I, I teach how to start improvising, how to um, approach music from a different angle, how to listen to the music differently. You know, like oh, listen to that bass line. You know, learn that bass line on fiddle. I was like, why would I learn a bass line? Because it's going to help you understand the harmony, you know? So going back to, you know, the instructor question that we had before, 
it's always a great thing to, to have someone looking over and saying, oh, no, dude, try this. You know, that's what, you, what you're doing is great, but try it this way. Maybe you're going to have two options for the same thing. You know, maybe your comfort zone will be larger, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's that's another thing is when you have uh, things that you normally do, right? whether it's going to be life related or, or work related or, uh, you know, studies related or college, whatever. But when it comes to you, we all have our comfort zones. And then we have to push that, make it big. Right. So you're not only comfortable playing in one key, for example. Right. Because we have 12, you know, and, you know, st stuff like that, you know, it's always great to hear their feedback, you know, seeing them week one or week two of the semester and then seeing them the last week of the semester. And then they, they improvise, they play something. I was like, okay, now, did you believe me when I told you that to play that bass line on the fiddle, right? You were looking at me differently when I asked you to do that. But now you understand the approach. Once you understand the approach, you can apply that approach into your playing. Once you're applying that approach to your playing uh, many and many, many, many more times, you are expanding your comfort zone. You know, in other words, you become um, a better improviser. You know, you, 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 you become a better musician. You, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I would say like probably... Um... Well, actually, when I first started playing drums, I had a uh, instructor um, that was teaching me and stuff. And I don't know, I had kind of bad experience with um, private instructors because he, I remember I was, I was an eight year old little kid just starting to play drums. And the guy was like, play me a paradiddle on the practice pad. I had no clue what a paradiddle was. And he said, right, left, right, right. And I was like, it just, it was like the, my mind was just exploding and stuff. And I'm, I was this, I was this little bratty kid that was crying saying, like, I don't want to take this anymore. And then my dad listened to me and cut that off. And then I, that's when I started self teaching myself. And then later on, it took me a while to like want to go back because I think it was another time, like a lot of prime instructors want to push you and try to, like they put so much work on you and stuff. And I had a lot of that experience that I kind of realized over the years, like that's kind of like, um, if you want to get better at what you do, try to, um, probably say like, um, like when I'm a private instructor and stuff, I, I don't want to give, I know other people have other lives to do too. So I try not to give so much stuff or like not expect you to, do so much and stuff like that because you got other things going on in your life um but try to do some to become better and stuff so and that's what i was that's what my opinion as like a teacher's wise and everything so that was well, like my, sometimes sometimes you yeah. have to recognize how much work and what level these students are because mm -hmm. it's hard to get from one to 50 you know so but going from one to five is easier, right? And then five to 10, and then 10 to 50, and 15 to 20, or even one to two sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you get to 10, but you have to push it back to seven, you know? And then slowly, um, it, it slowly get to your desired um, idea or topic, you know, or subject. Call it however you want it, you know? But we have a, a desired goal at the end, at the beginning of the semester, and we have uh, execution of those goals by the end of the semester. Sometimes the execution is not 100%. Sometimes it is 100%. You know, um, we're trying to get to that 100% every time. But again, we're human beings. So sometimes things get in the way for whatever reason. Um, and then we don't deliver the hundred percent, you know, but we always try. And then putting that, those ideas in, in work and saying, okay, try this for this week. 
and maybe we'll go into that next week. And then maybe next week we'll do something third. And then week four, we kind of combine all the three that we worked on. So it's, it's really a um, uh, systematic way of putting things together. You know, it's like you're putting a puzzle together, right? And sometimes, sometimes you put a puzzle together within five minutes. Sometimes it takes you an hour. And mm -hmm. sometimes you would put a large piece together quickly, you know, because you would recognize one part of the uh, part of the picture that you see. But then the other one could be a little blurrier or, I don't know, uh, you know, darker with similar colors. So it's hard to identify those, you know. So taking the time, taking the correct, well, not correct, maybe, but taking the um, amount of information that you want to provide and taking the feedback from your student will give you results. You know what I mean? That's what I found. I'm not going to push you do 100 push-ups at your first lesson, but I'm going to ask you for five and then see if you can do five. Maybe we can start with six next week or seven or whatever. But by the end of the semester, mm -hmm. I'd like you to be comfortable within 50, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, really good strategy and everything. Um, so do you think... Um, we as educators and musicians could do more to support people that don't really have access to learn a musical instrument? Absolutely. I think we, as educators, as performers, as, you know, people who are um, involved with arts in general, you know, I think music is the, the, the like I said, the beautiful, the most beautiful thing that exists out there. Some people may have a different opinion, but we all agree that music is something that we all need. And, um, you know, giving back to communities, um, finding ways to, to give back to communities, you know, is, is one of the ways um, that, that we, you know, talking, creating workshops, creating, um, you know, classes uh, even outside of, of colleges and, and, um, and institutions where we work, right? Um, you know, um, going into different schools and, and talk about music, um, even, even that, you know, even though those kids will probably never uh, or could never learn an instrument or play an instrument, but to have a... Um, option for them to to present an opportunity for them i think it's an important thing you know what i mean like get, getting it out there and talking about it and presenting this as an as an opportunity as something they could pursue later in their life you know i think that would be great and i'm not saying that we're not doing it we're all doing the best we can right or the best that we think we can um, but, you know, as they say, there's always room for more, you know, there are different, um, programs, um, available throughout the state that we can look into, um, offer a different reach out, you know, reaching out to say, Hey, you know, I'm doing this. Do you have a, a you know, certain amount of students that will be in, in, in interested in something like this and then. You know, you knock on doors and say, hey, you know, let's do this. Let's do that. You know, a lot of a lot of it is unfortunately uh, related to fun, fin financial uh, barriers. Because we all have to live, pay our bills at, at, you know, by the end of the day. But we also have to remember that it's not always about the money. You know, we need money. Yes, we do. It's clear, right? But not everything is related to money. There's things that money can buy and things that money cannot buy. And, and I think we should start focusing on, on the other part, things that, that money cannot buy. You know what I mean? For example, I had just this past Saturday, I had a workshop. Uh, with hundred uh, string uh, string players that came from um, Virginia, mm. uh, yeah, last week, and 
they were interested in more contemporary styles. So they were all classically trained and, uh, and good players, obviously. Um, so we, you know, worked on like a rock song and I, and I played for them a little bit. When those Honda kids started playing and I, I started playing with them and, and the room was kind of breathing music, you know what I mean? The, 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 the entire place was like, I don't know, um, had this special energy going on. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's something that money cannot buy. And in this situation, I don't, I don't care if I'm going to get paid for that or not. You know what I mean? It's, it's not about that. It's about that moment when we started playing together, you know, and the moment where the, the workshop was about two and a half hours. So the moment where they, they um, entered the room and the moment they, they left the room, the feeling that they had, that's what I'm talking about, you know? That's um great words right there. And yeah, definitely um music can be it's it's anywhere. And yeah, very, very important stuff. So um so let's go to your um next song. Um if you want to talk a little bit about your next song. Sure. Why don't we do a light that shines? Um that's number six on the record. And um there's no violin on this record. That's the reason I picked it. So I play guitar. Uh, I have two faculty members, Berkeley faculty members on this record. Bruce Gertz is playing bass and Vlada Milenkovic, also from Serbia, plays mm. um, plays melodica um, on this record. So um, very uh, um, nice tune in a way that um, I wanted to do something simply er, so it's not too complicated, has a nice melody, and has this light that shines that we kind of um, were hoping to get, you know, in the time where we were in. All right. Well, yeah, thank you for sharing our words for your song and hope you enjoy this video.
and we're back yeah love the song um sound like you had the same chord progression throughout the song and soloing great solos from different um people and everything just love the love the nice groove and song and everything different textures and everything so another wonderful song from the legend joseph <laughs> yeah well you know the the entire record is more like funky and progressive and and even rock i have, I have some uh stuff that it's more rocky but this one is more like a like a pop song with nice melody with like great um you know melodic solo and and uh kind of jazzier feel to it you know so yeah speaking of that for all the viewers out there where can we find your music just about any platform so pick your favorite platform spotify you know itunes youtube amazon music you know just search my name and it's going to be there yep good stuff all right well moving on so what if you know, <clears throat> what have you been playing music this past year uh lots of different places i haven't done a lot of traveling uh before covid i used to do about 150 160 shows a year mm. which was kind of a lot um so i you know brought it down to whatever the number is but i significantly brought it down so i'm not doing a lot of traveling i do new england shows i may do some um traveling in the summer and maybe in the fall I'll, I'll may go to europe and do do some shows there we'll see what happens i'm kind of in the process of of doing that um so it's more you know local gigs playing with friends most of the time you know and um just keep it keep the 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 thing going you know that's that's important you know having your phone ringing is is an important thing if you're interested in performing you know that's like i said performing is is something that i still really enjoy so yeah that's good stuff um so what's your what's your vision for the rest of 2023 or your future hey hopefully uh, you know have a good health and then everything comes from there you know i know it's kind of a cliche but that's what it is if you're healthy you can think if you think you can create if you can create you can deliver you know <laughs> <laughs> so you know um maybe another record i don't know i uh started a new or uh put together a new group lineup uh we did a few shows i have some shows down the road uh, i'll be playing at berkeley uh i believe july 17th uh, i'll be home <laughs> yeah um those that that was one of the dates that they could offer um so i'm trying to uh, maybe put something together uh, maybe a new record. We'll see. You know, I'm just going to kind of take my time. Uh, I have a lot of teaching during the summer because I do 12 week and I, I teach also the five week program as well. Um, and um, we'll see what happens, you know. But like I said, you know, being healthy, keeping it, keeping things going. And, um, and we'll see, you know. Yeah, it's always... Um... Like oh, I'm trying to remember. Don't always um see where it's at and everything. Like just um I'm trying to remember my grandfather told me that like um you always um you always find out what's going on. Like you don't don't try to plan. You you can, like you can plan for the future, but well, you can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can definitely like have some ideas of what you want to do and what you don't want to do and you know things like that but life takes funky curves you know sometimes so but we'll learn to deal with that you know all right yeah if you um well if you could perform with anyone living or not living who would you perform with and why 
<laughs> oh, this is a hard question. I don't know. There's too way too many people. Way way too many people to even think about. Because um I like different genres, you know. I like music as as it is, as it appears to to, to us, you know. So I like way too many musicians to mention. Maybe one that is kind of significant. Um, maybe Miles Davis, since we mentioned him. Yeah, you of know. course. Yeah, I think it's one of the he was one of like the first big musicians that went to Berkeley. I think he went to Berkeley for a little bit, and then he started off playing I jazz and everything. I, I, I don't know if he went to Berkeley, but anyways, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's um, he's well, he's there. someone that 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 really has a big mark on on the music scene in the 20th century. So, maybe yeah, maybe if I need to mention one person, maybe it would be him. Um, you know, I, I I played with. Um, I was fortunate enough to play with a good amount of musicians that that I like. You know, even influenced me. Um, but Miles would be one one that I would kind of, if I could go back, I would pick Miles. That's definitely a great choice. Great trauma flair. Um, blue and green. Well, no, it's it's kind of blue. That owl. Kind of blue, yeah. That owl is so good. <laughs> yeah. So all the viewers out there, two things. Go see Joseph July 17th at Berkeley and go listen to Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. Great record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree to both. All right. So um oh, last cool. question. So what are some party words you want to let um you want to have our listeners with? Like what what are some of your words you want us to leave us with and everything? Be kind, be gentle, help others any way you can. Don't be selfish. Practice. Practice more. And then practice more. That's great words of wisdom. <laughs> but Joseph, thank you so much for um, being part of this interview. Um, it was nice interviewing you and everything. Just have an honor to have um, Berkeley professor and wonderful musician that has been to the music industry for years and stuff and i can learn from it since i'm about to start my own music career and stuff um so thank you you're an inspiring person and chrome musician and doing so many great things so thank you so much and i hope um every all the viewers if you'd like to book a lesson with lily theater company go to www.lilytheatercompany.org and we'll see you guys next time Thank you. Thanks for having me, man.